Welcome back foodies, lovers of things baked. Once again, three generations of Italian bakers are here to share a beautiful recipe and a new family tradition. Our senior baker, Joe. Medium baker, John. Junior baker, Jason. This Thanksgiving, we're starting a new family tradition of making cinnamon rolls. Let me show you what all of the ingredients are. These are the dough ingredients the filling ingredients, and this is the icing ingredients. For the dough, you'll need flour, sugar, yeast, butter, unsalted, and five eggs. For the filling, brown sugar, cinnamon, butter again, a little bit of salt. And for the icing, we have powdered sugar, cream cheese, and milk. We are now preparing to make the dough, and the ingredients once again are sugar, flour, yeast, butter, and the eggs are in the mixer. Notice, if you would, the senior baker's detailed method of measuring sugar. Joe? This is a homemade two-ounce weight, exactly with two, four, six, eight, ten quarters equal two ounces. We will now attempt to get an exact measurement. Uh, the easy missed away. Perfect. <laughs> All right, to make the dough, we've added the five eggs, six ounces of buttermilk, the two ounces of sugar, and to that we will add six tablespoons of melted butter at room temperature. We'll beat this thoroughly until it's consistent. The liquid ingredients have been completely mixed. And now the dry ingredients will be mixed. We have a combination of two cups of flour, one dry container of yeast, and a teaspoon and a quarter of salt. We will put this in with the liquid ingredients and continue to beat it until it is smooth. The dough has now been mixing thoroughly, and if you can see it, it's the consistency of a thick pancake batter. We now are going to switch from the whisk attachment to the dough hook attachment. I am now going to add another cup of flour, and we're going to want the dough to change from a pancake batter into a soft dough. It shouldn't be sticky, but we don't want it to have too much flour and be too heavy. This is the tricky part. So we're going to let it go about five minutes, and then we'll check it again. Notice, if you would, that the dough remains sticky, sticky. And as a result, we've added a half a cup of more flour. The uh, machine now uh, has mixed the ingredients completely. We've had the kneading hook on for a uh, probably about three or four minutes and the dough is no longer sticky. Slightly but actually adequate to knead a bit by hand on the floured surface. So we will remove it from the third generation the container. How about third generation? <laughs> remove it from the container and uh, although it is not sticky, it does adhere a little bit. So be a little wiser than what I was. Put your hand in a little flour first, Stay and it'll come out very, very, very easily. And here we go on to our floured surface. And this is what old grandma. And the great grandmas used to do with great ease. A little bit of kneading with your hands and a little bit of flour to prevent some sticking. This you should continue for about three or four minutes. And this 
is the nice silky consistency. No stickiness whatsoever. Action. First generation is Biddy busy doing what old folks do, a trip to the bathroom again. Third generation is fooling around on a computer. Second generation is left with doing the work. This stage, we are now going to allow the dough to rise. So a small amount of oil in a ceramic bowl. We take our beautiful silky dough, one side down. We flip it over to coat the top so it doesn't dry out. And we're going to let it rest for about an hour and allow it to double in size. All right, while our dough is rising, we're going to go ahead and get started on the icing. To the mixer, we've added two ounces of cream cheese, three tablespoons of milk, and a cup and a half of powdered sugar. We'll go ahead and blend this until we have an icing-like consistency. The dough now has raised about two and a half times. Absolutely gorgeous. Now we'll punch it down a little. This is a lot of fun, like uh, playing in dough when you're a little kid. Really nice. Now we're going to take it out and we're going to roll it and rest for, a rest for about three or four minutes. All right, folks, we're ready for the next step. The dough has been punched down, it's rested for five minutes. We have decided to roll it out on a pastry cloth covered with flour. It's not essential, you can do it on your countertop, but if you're, if you're able to, to roll it out on a pastry cloth, it won't stick quite as much. And now we roll out the dough to prepare it for the filling. Notice I'm using typical household rolling pin, nothing special about it. You can see how supple the dough is and how easily it's rolling out. This is the pan that dough will originally be in, will, will eventually be in, and we want the dough to be about this long, but it needs to be wider, wider. So we just want to keep working it. She's being very cooperative, very nice. Uh, as you notice now, the pastry dough has been uh, flattened nicely, it is nice and shiny. We are now going to put on coating of butter, followed by a coating of brown sugar with some cinnamon. And it is easiest to start with just the spoon, and as you see, my son John is helping me along. However, I have nice clean hands, and the absolute best way of spreading it is with your hands. And next comes the sugar and cinnamon sugar is the taste of the gloves. <laughs> All right, now that we have the butter and cinnamon sugar mixture spread evenly throughout the dough, we'll go ahead and roll it up into a cinnamon roll. This requires three generations. Absolutely. As you can see, the dough has been the dough has been very nicely rolled out, and we are now going to cut it into twelve pieces. The easiest way to do this is to first cut the main one in half main section in half, cut this section in half. That now gives us quarters. We're going to take each quarter and cut each quarter into thirds. Doesn't have to be exact. You can eyeball it. See it goes pretty quickly. One of course wants to use a sharp knife. And then once we have our pieces, we're then going to lay our pieces into the, uh, into the baking pan. There you have it. Three generation of bakers We've now completed the cinnamon rolls. The dough has been made, the filling has been applied, they've been rolled, they've been cut. They're in a nine and a half by 11 inch glass baking dish. We're going to cover them and then allow them to raise in the refrigerator overnight. Tomorrow morning, we wake, we bake, we ice, and we eat. So my friends, we're down the back stretch. We got up early this morning. 
allowed the uh, cinnamon rolls to rise for about 45 minutes in the oven. Then we preheated the oven to 350 degrees and it took exactly 26 minutes for the cinnamon rolls to bake to this level. We will then let them cool a little bit and ice them with the icing that was made last night. And there you have it. A new tradition by the three generation of bakers. Joe, John, Jason. See you all next year. Bye.